Hey, how you doing? This is a good place. Surfing yeah. Bitcoin. Yeah. That was a fun conference. Oh, remember. Yeah, we yeah, met yeah. him in France and oh, we yeah. tried to, to come to El Salvador yeah. for adopting Bitcoin. He, he made me come here. <laughs> I love it. Great choice. <laughs> nice. We bought a house here 18 years ago. Um, came here on a surf trip, fell in love with the community, the warm water, and then we moved here full time, I think eight years ago. And just hearing the stories from Roman, we met him a long time ago and then he left for Italy for a while and came back and Jorge who worked with us for a while in community projects and just the history of so many kids growing up here without their parents around, a lot of them were in the US were working or, or in jail because they were in the gangs. And so you had this kind of continued process of the young people feeling like there's no hope here. The only hope was to leave to the US or join the gangs. So here we are. This is the ground zero, how people call it. So the thing that you started, so you started exactly from here? Yeah, I mean, it was based in the community, but this became the physical location. We wanted a place that was safe for the youth to gather. And it was Jorge's dream to have a property. And so we found this property and we actually built this during the COVID lockdown. This building was being built. And the name is Hope House. In Spanish, is Casa Esperanza. Because the idea is that everyone can come here and find hope, you know, something that we didn't have, didn't grow. And how they find hope, we have leaders here every day. There are computers, we have internet, the kids can come here. We have different projects all day. I see. You are, you are doing lessons and classes. Yes. We, have, we work in four pillars here, education, recreation, spirituality, empowerment. We have been working with Hope House for more than 10 years to trying to change our community, trying to empower men, the young people here to stop dreaming to leave the country but staying here and working here. So you cannot pretend to come from the outside and say, well, you need this, this and that, right? It's, maybe it's not the right thing for, for the local community. You shouldn't, you should live here. You should, you know, immerse yourself in, in, the, in the community and then you can design something that actually helps people here, right? Is what oh, you did. Yeah, and that's, that's like he said that, that the idea came from me, but really all the ideas of how to implement it came from Roman and Jorge and Irvin. Everything, they're saying, hey, we need English classes, we need computer classes, and they are the ones that implement it. And that's the way real change happens. And then the people in the community see people who grew up here making a difference, and they know that they can follow their example and do the same. Bitcoin is for us, in fact, it's just another tool that teaching us or bring to our community one thing that no one teach you around the, around the world. There is financial education. Like my parents, my grandfathers, they never have access to a bank account. They never save money. We never hear from anyone in our family what money is or an asset or transacting digitally or, or making and receive digital payment. Those were things that people in the first world they just swash their credit cards and they do it, you know, but in our community was like 90%, I will say that people here didn't have access to a simple bank account. We live in a world where I feel banks gave up on many communities. Right? We have in the world around 2 billion people that uh, are unbanked. These 2 million people are not bad people, right? They are just too poor to have a bank account. It's super crazy, right, if you think about it, right? Being too poor to not even be able to afford have a bank account. Bitcoin is a solution for that. If there is a common denominator uh, on uh, all these communities in, you know, starting from Central, South America, but also uh, Africa, Turkey, and so on, is all about uh, having access to at least a smartphone. So smartphones are um, extremely common, um, even in poorer areas. So having a way to have money always available that you can keep with yourself, you can protect yourself and so on, that is sitting on your smartphone and allows you to buy, to do payments, to buy you whatever you want and maybe send your children to school and so on is something that is unprecedented. I would say 80% of the population doesn't have access to any financial system. And when they have access to receive payments from any tourists in the world, so that, you know, that's changing their mind. 
So people wonder how many merchants are here actually accepting Bitcoin, and I think it's close to 100 now in El Zante, which is amazing because this is a pretty small community. So I would say probably 80, 90% of the merchants here at this point are accepting Bitcoin. I think when the president made Bitcoin a legal tender, it gives to all of us a place to be exciting for the future, a place to come and building, a place to come and dreaming, because I think as a humans, we want to live in the place that we are exciting for the future. We want to live in the place that we wake up and we see hope. We, we want to live in the place that we see that things are moving as a, as a better future. So as we look to the future and think about what's next for us, we're really focusing on making sure what we've started here continues to grow and that the seeds we've planted actually materialize into something sustainable. And those people, the young people that are raising up, they become mentors for the next generation. So we want to make sure that our focus maintains on the community. You know, there's a lot of international focus and press, but we want to keep it where it started. If Bitcoin is working here, if it works in our community, it will work in our country and it's inspired many communities around the world to follow because they see the potential that Bitcoin have to be inclusive, to give hope, to be access to many people around the world that they never had. And I think is for us, we just feel honored that people get inspired by us, you know.